In this video, I present example 2.33. The sliding plate viscometer shown below is used to measure the viscosity of a fluid. The top plate is moving to the right with a constant velocity of 10 meters per second in response to a force of 3 newtons. The bottom plate is stationary. What is the viscosity of the fluid? Assume a linear velocity distribution. I want to point out a typo. The plate dimensions should be 100 millimeters by 50 millimeters. So this leader line should extend up to the end of the plate and there should be a second arrowhead on this leader line. Before we begin solving this problem, I'd like to describe couette flow. Couette flow involves laminar flow of a viscous fluid between two parallel plates. The lower plate is stationary, the upper plate is moving. This type of flow is named in honor of Maurice Couette, who was a professor of physics in the late 1800s. The velocity profile is linear. At the lower plate, the fluid velocity is zero in accordance with the no-slip condition. At the upper plate, the fluid velocity is equal to V, which is the upper plate velocity. This is also in accordance with the no-slip condition. To define the problem, we recognize that it is couette flow. The upper plate is moving at a speed of 10 meters per second, which is about 20 miles an hour. The force that has to be placed on this plate to keep it in motion is 3 newtons, which is about 3 fifths of a pound force. The gap is 1 millimeter. The plate is 100 millimeters in this dimension and 50 millimeters into the paper. Notice that I converted all units to consistent units. The goal is to find the viscosity of the fluid in the gap. Here's an easy way to remember units on viscosity. The definition of viscosity is shear stress over rate of shear strain. This is also called velocity gradient. The dimensions of shear stress are force per area. The dimensions of velocity gradient are 1 over time. So force per area, newtons per square meter, 1 over time. Um, time units are seconds, so that comes up to the numerator. Let's review the expert way to solve problems. We'll use the work by Wales and Stagger. Wales and Stagger teach us that there is a secret that experts use to make solving problems easy and obvious. This secret is not taught in textbooks. This secret is really simple. Number one, start with a goal. Number two, reason with math to find the solution. Let's see how this works. Since the problem goal is to find viscosity, we ask a question. What equation do we know of that has viscosity as a variable? Well, the definition of viscosity contains our goal, so we mark viscosity in this equation with a boxed question mark. However, we do not know the shear stress or the velocity gradient. Thus, shear stress is our new goal and we ask a question. What equation do we know of that has shear stress as a variable? The definition of shear stress is a ratio of tangential force to area at a point in space. As shown in this sketch over here, it takes three newtons of force. This force is balanced by a shear stress distribution along the bottom of the plate. In this equation, the shear force is known, it's three newtons, and the area of the plate is known, as shown here. So, we now have enough information to find this. And so all we need to do is find the velocity gradient. So we ask the question, what equation involves velocity gradient? Since the velocity profile is linear, we can replace the derivative here with change in velocity over change in vertical distance as shown. We know values of this variable and values of this variable. So we can now calculate this. If we step back and look, we started with an equation with our goal in it. This equation introduced one, two, two additional unknowns. We found equations that had these two unknowns in it, and now we have one, two, three equations, and one, two, three unknowns. Our problem is cracked. 
To develop a plan, we ask the question, what is the easiest way to get numbers? I've outlined the plan in red. Step one is to use this equation to calculate velocity gradient. Step two is to use this equation to calculate shear stress. And step three is to use this equation to calculate the problem goal, which is viscosity. The calcs are shown here. The velocity gradient is 10,000 inverse seconds. The shear stress at the wall is 600 newtons per square meter or 600 pascals. To get a feel for this number, 600, compare this with atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is 100,000 pascals or 100,000 newtons per square meter. This is much, much bigger than 600. And in most fluids problems, the magnitude of shear stress is much less than the magnitude of pressure. Also note that both shear stress and pressure have dimensions of force per area or units of newtons per meter squared or units of pascals. Now we're ready to go ahead and calculate viscosity. This calculation is very straightforward. The answer is 0 0.06 newton seconds per meter squared or 0 0.06 pascal seconds. I validated my solution by checking with the solution manual, got the right number. I looked at this answer. What does this number mean? Is this realistic? Is this real world? So, I looked up the viscosity of water and it's 0 0.00114 pascal seconds and discovered the fluid in this problem is 50 times more viscous than water. Is this possible? So I looked at some other property values and I learned that the viscosity of 10W30 motor oil is 0.067 pascal seconds, which is very similar to 0.06. So this fluid could be an oil. I want to point out how engineers document properties. We list the fluid, the temperature, the pressure, and the value with units. Again, the fluid, the temperature, the pressure, and the value with units. And lastly, we list the source. This concludes example 2.33. Three tips I want to leave you with. Use your homework to reinforce concepts such as the definition of shear stress. Tip two, practice the Wales Woods method. This will help you take your problem solving to a whole new level. Tip three, put units on all variables so abstract variables become more and more meaningful. Hope you enjoyed this example.